This is an automatic license plate reader that I bought off eBay. These devices usually sit on top of cop cars or on highways to monitor vehicles of interest that are driving past. But like I do on my channel here, we have taken this device apart in previous videos and, uh, and analyzed its software. And today we are going to show how these devices on the public internet can be viewed, their video streams, without authentication. No, no logging in, no nothing. The, the video streams are open to the world. And live data feeds of the captured license plates that are going by. This is going to be an interesting video. So let's dig into some of the background on this device if you are new to my channel. If you are new to the channel, my name is Matt Brown. I do this for my day job. I rip apart devices like this perform security evaluations on a, a whole host of IoT devices and try to figure out how they tick. And then on this YouTube channel, we do some of the same stuff, but uh, with a fun spin. So this device that we've been looking at is made by Motorola, right? And like I mentioned, yeah, usually you might find these devices sitting on top of cop cars, actually multiple of these devices, as we discussed in past videos, uh, can feed into this kind of centralized computer device that we see here. And then, uh, you know, either they can provide a, a laptop or oftentimes in a cop car, there will be a laptop to view all of the license plate data that is captured by one of these automatic license plate readers. But cop cars are not the only places where these devices are deployed. They're also deployed in fixed locations like on highways, interstates, where they want to monitor the vehicles that are passing by. So we discussed in the last video that we were able to find this web server that was running on some of these devices, right? So, so here, when you go to this port 8080 on one of these devices that we, that we, that we ran this, this search for, and we found on, on the open internet, right? We found one of these devices, and so we can see that on port 8080, when we just go to the, 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 the main page here, right? When we just go to slash, it says 404 not found stream. And when we dug into the software of this device, we found that the stream name to get access to that video feed is slash cam color for the color video feed, and then cam I R for the infrared video feed. So uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but there are actually two cameras and then there are a number of IR illuminators. And uh, as some of you have pointed out in the comments, uh, all license plates are designed to be IR reflective, which makes the, the infrared viewing really great. So even if at, at night you can't see anything else, you will be able to see the license plate number because uh, the IR will reflect off of the license plate and you'll get a clear shot of the plate number. So uh, like we said, that this stream ID or the stream URL on the device itself was just slash cam IR or slash cam color. But when we go there on one of these devices that we found through, through our census search of devices that are out there on the internet, we see that it, it, it can't find that stream either. But when I thought about this for like a few seconds, I was like, well, of course it can't be that because this system, what my hypothesis of what one of these systems are is not one of these, but is this box. It's an aggregator box. It's gonna have multiple camera feeds feeding into a single box. And so then wouldn't we just guess that the right name would be to put cam and then a number, right? So the first thing I tried is, you know, something like this. Maybe, maybe the URL scheme looks like this or something. Uh, but it turns out that it is as simple as putting cam and then a number and then uh, appending that either color or IR identifier. And we can see here in Firefox, it, it can't actually do any, anything with this because we, as we talked about in the last video, this is a video stream that we can open up in VLC. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we are going to paste that in. 
and with no login information, we are now viewing a live video feed from, let's go back to our little census search here, from Illinois. So somewhere on a freeway, on an interstate in Illinois, there is one of these cameras sitting up there and we have a live stream to the video feed of this device. Let's go and look at that color feed, which will uh, help us to understand better that this is obviously a road. Uh, you can see that it's snowing right now, the big winter storm, there goes a car. There's go, there goes a car driving by. So we have this video feed, but is there anything else interesting on this device? Again, this is, there's, we're, 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 not, we're not doing any exploitation here. We are simply viewing a video feed that is publicly available on the internet, right? So uh, there, are th there are these other services here that are kind of interesting, right? So uh, I, I went through, uh, you, know, you know, a couple of these just connecting, not trying any, any, any attacks or anything. But here in port 5001, uh, let's go ahead and let's see if we can pull this up. We're going to do a side by side here and we're going to run this command and then we're just going to we're just going to watch this as a car drives by and so this is this is live so i i, I don't know how long this is going to take but uh what we should see is that when a car drives by we we get some data dumped and there you go so 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 we saw that interaction we saw a car goes by data start streaming to us be, just because we've connected to this this thing on port 5001. So this is fascinating. And if I if I if I I'm just going to control C out of that, but we can, what we can see here is some really interesting, you know, something that kind of looks like JSON, but there's 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 obviously a bunch of this is obviously like a binary file that has some text-based data interlaced into it. But uh, what's very, very interesting to me is that up at the top of this file, if I can scroll all the way to the top of it, if it will let me. Oh, this is awesome. All right. So, you know what? All right. We don't see it there. But we're going to move on to our next step and show you how we can start to analyze all of this data that's coming through this stream. So. What we're going to do is we're actually going to jump over here and we're going to pipe data from this service into a file called test.bin. And so we, we can see we're passing the dash V flag just to be verbose so we can see that our connection succeeded. That's it. And then we're going to wait here until we assume that we should have some data in our file uh, if we see a car. And in fact, we can just check that our test file, okay, sweet. Our test file has 32 kilobytes of data in here. So we're just gonna close out of it. And now we're gonna use XXD. XXD is just a command line hex editor to take a look at what's in this file and then we'll use less. So up here at the top of the file, we see this. So uh, it, is, it is my belief, uh, my hypothesis that this is a license plate reading. Right at the top is where it's giving us the data about a license plate number. And then we have some, some kind of GUID. We've got, you know, a timestamp that's, you know, it's obviously not set or something like that. Um, we have a bunch of other stuff. Um, and then, uh, quite interestingly, we have a, uh, what, what clearly seems to be a header of an image file. If you've ever looked at uh, like a, a GIF or an image file, like a JPEG image file, uh, this, this header looks familiar. So now what we can actually do, since we dumped this all to a file, is we can actually use binwalk to see if binwalk can identify anything inside of this binary. And in fact, it was able to identify a JPEG image file. So let's go ahead and have binwalk extract that for us. So we're just gonna use the dash E flag on our test.bin that we dumped out. And then here in the extractions folder, we're gonna drill down. Actually, I'm just gonna, gonna view the image that it extracted out here. And there we go. We now have a, uh, an image file that we extracted out of the larger binary you know, packed file that 
we, we, we saw at the beginning, we saw the license plate number, and then here, this image is terrible. I'm sure the IR image was better, right? Uh, is how it was actually able to get the, the real data out of it. So let's go ahead and um, yeah, let's, let's do this where we're going to, all right, so we're gonna do side by side and then we're going to, we're gonna say strings. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna pipe it to the, to the strings command. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna grep for, I, th I think it takes, uh, like, like a license plate can't have lowercase letters, right? So we're going to grep for um, only things that are A to Z, zero to nine, you know, we're gonna grab for strings that have at least one of those characters, right? Um, so let's let's try that. And we, oh oh, at the, at the start of the string. So as that goes by, we should get a license plate reading that is correlated with what we see over here. Now sometimes, yeah, the sometimes data is not good or it lags behind or something. Hey, okay, 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 we got something there. Nines, okay, so there, 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 there's a license plate, there's a license plate for sure. Okay, um, so what we're gonna try to do now is we're gonna try to switch it to the IR mode, cam one IR, and now I'm gonna try to like stop it when I see a car, so we can verify that we're capturing a license plate in real time. So now we just have to be patient and wait. And I have to click pause at the right moment. Oh, okay. So we can see that the license plate starts with EA9. Okay, so obviously we got a bunch of false positives. We could write a Python script to parse this better. But well, there you go. <laughs> in real time, we have the video feed, but we're also getting this streaming binary data. Again, no authentication on the video stream, no authentication on this port that's just dumping all this data about the, yeah, about the license plate itself. So it'd be really easy to like write a Python script that would parse this data out and we, we could determine what the other, obviously the, there's the image file, there's a ca image capture uh, inside this binary stream of the, uh, the the license plate image there's you know it's it's there's the 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 ocr there's the conversion of the image into a into a text you know based license plate number um and then there's a bunch of metadata about it right all of this is publicly accessible and um yeah kind of a spoiler alert like even like some of these locations that say other states, uh, a lot of these are in the state of Illinois based on the license plate, uh, you know, the, the, the states of the license plates of the cars that are driving by on these video streams. So uh, yeah, state of Illinois, uh, you, you, get, you really need to get on it. <laughs> You've left these devices all out in the open uh, and everybody's data is just there for the taking. So um, yeah, this is, uh, this is really wild. I did not expect uh, to get this far with this device. But uh, it just goes to show you that, um, well, I got a number of comments in the first couple of videos being like, well, th like none of this stuff matters. None of these findings are really that important. And the reason given was, well, this will be behind a private network, right? Like these devices will be behind a private network. And even if that were so, I think uh, Bruce Schneier talks about this, this principle in cryptography. I think it's generally applicable to a lot of areas of security that attacks always get better. They, they like never get, they never get harder. Like once you've deployed a solution out into the world, very rarely does the security of it increase over time. Um, like, yeah, you might patch stuff, but just, just your general security architecture of how the device functions in the ecosystem uh, yeah, maybe you can, you can, you know, give people some new best practices or you can push some security patches, uh, and, and stuff like that. But generally speaking, your security architecture is going to be baked into that device once you deliver it. And it's only going to get, it's only going to get easier. The attack's only going to get easier. And especially if you have nation state actors or, you know, or you have people that misconfigure these devices and then they put them on the public internet, right? Which is what we see 
in this case. So uh, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you find this content interesting, it really helps me and the channel if you subscribe, and then you will get notified about uh, new content that I put out. So thank you. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Uh, do you think this was uh, crazy? Do you think it's not a big deal that these license plates are out there because it's in the public anyway? Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Have a good day.